Hello, I am Brittany Hall and today we are at Arbor Farm and we are going to talk to Skylar about his operation here. So why don't you tell us who you are and a bit about your farm, what you produce and where folks can find your products. Yeah, so I'm Skylar Beeman. I am uh, here in Guilford, Connecticut on Arbor Farm. I raise sheep, chickens, geese, and rabbits. Uh, so I'm primarily a livestock farmer. Uh, for the sheep, they are dual purpose, so I do meat and wool. Okay. Uh, for the chickens, I mainly do egg production, trying to get into meat production, mm -hmm. but there's only so much, so many hours in a day. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the geese are just for fun right now, right. but there are dreams of those kind of getting the Christmas goose back in style um, <laughs> and doing that. Um, and then my rabbits are meat rabbits that I will also do pelts with as well. Okay. Um, so yeah, you know, uh, you can get my product really just by right now contacting me directly okay. via in my Instagram account, which is at Arbor Farm CT. Okay. Um, I also have a Patreon account, so you can subscribe to that and get, you know, even more products and more up to date things there. Um, but right now, uh, I feel very fortunate that it's uh, really quick to just contact yeah. me. That's awesome. And uh, do that way. Oh, cool. All right. So today we're talking about like, humane handling of livestock. So can you tell us what humane handling of your animals means to Arbor Farm? Yeah. So the biggest thing is about preparation yeah. for me. My sheep are moving all the time. I'm yeah. doing intense rotational grazing. I use a portable electric netting fence mm -hmm. uh, that's all solar powered. So getting them to move properly yeah. and in in the <laughs> in the easiest and most efficient way is all about preparation on my end yeah. um, and that really then is kind of a direct response to me just knowing my sheep and knowing yeah. I know Annie is going to go over there yeah. because she loves that spot over there and she's going to lead everybody over there. Mm -hmm. So I should probably try to cut that off quickly to make sure that they go this way. Yeah. Um, so it's really just a matter of preparation in mm -hmm. response to just spending time with my animals and getting to know their individual personalities mm -hmm. so that I can work with them rather than working against them. Yeah. How is it that you're able to move your sheep to new pastures on and off your farm? like? relatively easily? Um, I just use it a bucket of grain. Mm -hmm. I grain train my animals. Okay. So when they hear that noise of grain in a bucket, they know that I have it and they're really excited about it. They don't get grain that often. Okay. Um, so when they do, it's a big treat uh, and they'll just follow me wherever I go. Mm -hmm. That also is in direct response to just getting to know them and having them feel comfortable with me yeah. and wanting to follow me. Yeah. Um, when you're moving your sheep off the farm to another pasture, um, how do you do that? Do you have like a special vehicle? Yeah, so I have uh, my dad's dump truck and I have this cage that, you know, we can kind of walk by and it literally slides into the back of the truck. Okay. And because it's a dump truck, I can tip it up a little bit mm -hmm. and I put a old carpet on the floor so that they just kind of jump in or I kind of help them in a little bit. Um, you know, some of them literally just jump in yeah. because they know. Um, uh, and then I just drive them down and you know, they jump right back out. The cage and everything, do you like have a sense of how much it cost you? I don't remember how much that yeah. was. It was, you know, of the options of like, if I'm gonna get a trailer with a mm -hmm. truck that can haul, like, it's obviously way cheaper than yeah. that. Um, and that cage breaks down into um, metal panels that I can use for other things okay. to, you know, section off other yeah. things if I needed to. So it was very versatile yeah. in that regard. Um, but yeah, you know, like the electric netting fence that mm -hmm. I use, those are really expensive. Yeah. Um, and the solar chargers are really expensive. Mm -hmm. But you know, it works yeah. and it's worth the investment. Yeah. Um, have you tried any other fencing methods and found that they did not work? So uh, the farm that I used to work at down in Maryland mm -hmm. had, you know, permanent fencing yeah. with an electric wire around it. Mm -hmm. I couldn't stand the permanent fencing mm -hmm. because weed whacking up against it is such a pain. With this, I just move it and mm -hmm. they eat it and I don't have to weed whack anything. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit more effort 
from the day to day, but that job of weed whacking for me, I can't stand. Um, I will be making some permanent fencing mm -hmm. areas uh, on my property, but they're going to be very small, yeah. you know, and like my dry lot for winter and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, so some permanent fencing is great, but I love this electric netting that okay. we use. I really do. Okay. Before moving your sheep to a new location, is there anything you do to make sure it's safe for them? Yes, so uh, the pasture that we are gonna go to after this has a giant section of milkweed, yeah. which is very poisonous to sheep. And um, so I'm really careful about sectioning it off. Mm -hmm. And then once I have sectioned that off, before I let them out, I walk in the areas that's close to the milkweed or mm -hmm. in areas that I have remembered that there is milkweed okay. and I pick it out. Um, other things that they're that are poisonous like um like the horse nettle which is technically a nightshade okay. and you know a few of those other things mm -hmm. like lantana they tend to move around it okay, they like naturally they, avoid they, it. they kind of naturally avoid it i've just found that like milkweed they're like yeah we like this <laughs> i really am really specific about doing that yeah um but other than that it's really just you know just making sure that it's all okay and that the fence itself isn't being grounded out by mm -hmm. really tall grass or anything yeah. like that. Could you talk a bit about um, clearing your land? I mean, it looks like you've got space for your sheep now, but was it always like this? No, <laughs> it was not. When I bought this property, which is 1.8 acres, mm -hmm. it was every single invasive species up above my head. So slowly but surely, you know, I used the sheep to help me clear mm -hmm. it. Um, sheep love to browse. They yeah. love Love eating all of those things you know sometimes they'll actually uh, prefer the multiflora over a grass okay. um, but unlike goats they won't stand on their back legs mm -hmm. so I had to go and cut everything down by hand mm -hmm. put it at their level they would eat all of what they wanted to eat off of it. Yeah. And then I have certain areas where I've been trying to build back, you know, structure. Mm -hmm. um, I have this lovely uh, scape that we're looking upon right yeah. now that's kind of very glaring. Mm -hmm. So I've been using a lot of the debris, old nasty hay, mm -hmm. you know, trying to kind of let the sheep naturally build it themselves. Okay. And they go up there, they will traverse all the way up there mm -hmm. and they're slowly but surely letting the soil degrade down yeah. and I'll make tears just naturally yeah. and with where they want to go mm -hmm. and what they feel comfortable doing so using them to kind of terrace the land yeah and do you think you're gonna um, like put seed down so you will also see I have I've I feed a lot of my hay on the ground yeah. and I feed a lot of first cut hay at this time of year which has a lot of the seed heads in it yeah. that has been the best way for me to build pasture mm -hmm. um, because when I bought this property there was no nutrient in mm -hmm. the soil whatsoever. So the hay is just helping to create soil yeah. and it also has seed in it. And then it seeds the things that I would want it to seed. Um, but I'm also like, I'm not pulling out the multiflora bushes. I'm not yeah. pulling out the autumn olive. I let them grow back because they'll just eat them down again. Mm -hmm. um, and slowly but surely they will kill them. They'll just degrade into the soil and make more soil. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I kind of, I waste a lot of hay in that regard, but it's to build soil in yeah. the grand scheme of things. Um, so how often do you like rotate the pasture? Like how do you know when it's time? The sheep actually tell me. Okay. Yep, so they are really loud when they're like, hey dude, there's nothing here for us. Yeah. And they are just much more vocal. Mm -hmm. um, but then there are some times that I push them a little bit on a pasture, which is not the ideal thing, but it's what I can do right mm -hmm. now. So it's usually a mixture of them telling me, mm -hmm. me and me looking at the ground yeah. um, and kind of just making a judgment call by okay. that. So generally um, when your sheep are off your farm, do you have to bring them water or like provide shelter? Yep. Like, so how does that work out? Right, so on this pasture, which is um, the broad acres pasture mm -hmm. on River Street, right off the Guilford Green, um, I bring the water down to them. Uh, I, I fill up their both of their five gallon buckets twice a day um, and it's easier for me to just bring them in my own five gallon buckets with lids uh, than traversing up to the house to fill it up and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. It's just easier to do that. Um, there is a shelter here on this property. Yeah, and okay. so they live in there. Um, they don't really need it for necessarily like wind or rain or that kind of stuff. It's really for shade. Yeah. That's really what they mm -hmm. need it for. You 
easier sheep for both wool and meat. Um, do you process your own wool? Like, do you shear them? So that's the one thing that I don't do as sheep is shearing. Okay. I bring in a professional for that. Okay. They have the correct equipment. Mm -hmm. It's what they do. They know the positions. You know, it's also a chance for me to interface with other shepherds. Yeah. I use um, Colin and Siri of Yankee Rock Farm, and they're based up in Vermont, and they do a fabulous job with shearing. Yeah. As far as you know, the processing yeah. for the wool. Um, I am kind of still figuring out what I want my wool to be. Yeah. Um, uh, I have brought some to be spun at a mill, it's Still River Mill, which is up in Eastford, Connecticut. Okay. Uh, and love that. I'm waiting for my second batch to come back in the next mm -hmm. couple months. Um, and then I brought a bunch of my other wool that's too short for spinning um, into yarn to be made into felt that I'm going to make mm -hmm. uh, dish sponges out of. Um, so I usually have a lot of people mm -hmm. process the wool in that regard. Mm -hmm. Obviously I go through and make sure that it's right yeah. for them. Um, pulling out all like the manure and mm -hmm. vegetation matter and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then do you process your own meat? Yes. So I am not licensed to sell you a cut of meat. Yes. I only do custom butcher. Mm -hmm. um, but I also I'm okay with that mm -hmm. because the only USDA inspected facility that's close enough to here is Litchfield, you know, mm -hmm. which is an hour away. Yeah. Uh, so I have a friend who lives 15 minutes up the road from me. They get into that same cage that goes mm -hmm. in the back of the truck that they're used to traveling in all the time. Yeah. We drive up 15 minutes. I bring them as a person that they know all the way till their final moment. Mm -hmm. And then I get to be a part of the process, which mm -hmm. I really enjoy. Yeah. Um, and then I have another friend of mine, Tim, who picks them up for me and makes all the cuts and wraps yeah, them and so freezes like them butchered, yeah. and then I just sell them as custom butcher lambs to, to clients. Can you talk a little bit about like how you raise the lambs and, and why you do it the way that you do? Ideally the mother should do everything on their own. Mm -hmm. Every now and again that doesn't happen mm -hmm. you know things happen uh, and you'll get a bottle baby. The great thing about having a bottle baby is that they're super okay being around humans. Mm -hmm. So they're the first ones to come over and everybody else follows. Yeah. So they're really great to help me manage just moving them from place to place mm -hmm. and to make everybody else feel very comfortable around me. Mm -hmm. There are some situations though where bottle babies can be brats <laughs> and because they don't have any fear of humans they yeah. can be really difficult to shear. Yeah. So having those bottle babies is really great. I don't want a whole flock of them, yeah. <laughs> definitely not. Um, because mothering is a heritable trait, you want that yeah. you know, part in there. Um, but having a couple of them, is really yeah, helpful. Yeah, makes things a little bit easier. Oh yeah, yeah. Have you ever thought about getting a herding dog to kind of, I don't know, make your life easier? Right now, with the numbers that I have, mm -hmm. I don't have enough numbers to keep a dog that engaged. Yeah. Um, and kind of how you've seen how I work them, mm -hmm. they kind of naturally just go where I need them to go or just follow me. Yeah. So I don't need that extra addition. There's a, a little bit more of me having to like run around mm -hmm. and, and herd myself. Um, but I have, I have considered it. Yeah. Do you have plans to scale up in the future? I have options to work other pieces of property. Okay. Um, but a big thing for me is that a, a big reason that I do this is I want to be around my sheep. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of effort to like go to other properties right now mm -hmm. and to like drive there, get in, get out, haul water, yeah. you know, or coming down here and they have all escaped and you know, and like yeah. not wishing that you had been able to see that ahead of time. So. Yes, I would love to scale up, mm -hmm. you know, I've been, you know, I have a couple lambs that I'm going to be keeping back this year that I'm really excited about seeing where they're going and, and creating this kind of sheep that I have in my head, yeah. um, vision wise. Um, but I need more land. Mm -hmm. And when you live in Connecticut, especially this area of Connecticut, yeah. um, you know, it's just hard to find that.